It's the winter WIA VHF UHF field day. It's pretty quiet and part of it may be because the WIA also decided to have its annual general meeting on this same day. So a few who might have been involved in the field day were in attendance at the meeting. Though because of COVID, it was all done online and via Zoom. And there was quite a good attendance. Anyway, just thought I'd talk a little bit about the WIA AGM. If you've never been to a WIA AGM, it goes something like this. There's the sad bit at the beginning where they acknowledge all the silent keys, the uh, members have died during the year. Then there's a boring bit where they talk about the financial report and other bits and pieces. Then there's a nice bit where they honor all the volunteers with awards, people who've done stuff for the WIA. And then there's a long-term bit at the end where they might have a guest speaker, they might have an open discussion where they talk about the WIA and the way forward. So it basically starts off bad and becomes good later on, if you could really simplify it. But it does mean that when you're halfway through or more through the WIA meeting, you really wonder, why am I here? Why am I watching this? So if you can survive to the end of the WIA meeting, then you've got a lot better stamina than most people. In this particular AGM, as I mentioned before, it was done online via Zoom because of COVID issues. Normally it would be associated with an annual conference where there's a lot more other activities. And for an example of that, a conference that I videoed a few years ago, just outside Adelaide. It's called Amateur Radio is Magic, so make sure you watch that video. I think it was 2017. Anyway, um, that was a fantastic WIA AGM, and it had a lot of the other activities with the meeting, just one of the small parts in that. Anyway, because of COVID, this one is the meeting only. So what was the business transacted? Well. The first thing, the first thing was there was basically a an attempt to amend the constitution. They wanted to put in um, some details in relation to a code of conduct. Now, of course, a constitutional change is not just your average motion at a meeting. You have to provide a lot more notice to members. And anyway, that wasn't done. There was a bit of toing and froing, questions asked, and all that. And really they should have prepared before that they should have dotted the i's crossed the t's but they didn't so that was withdrawn so then there was a bit of a uh, year in review um, a thing about the wia is that normally with bodies you've got president secretary treasurer and they uh, might be doing the talking anyway with this agm it was pretty much a one-man band the president only the secretary wasn't present uh, there's no publicly fa or member-facing treasurer to give a treasurer's report like you have in a lot of other organisations. So the president was doing 90% of the talking and it was a very heavy burden on them. I'm not sure if it was particularly the best way to conduct an AGM or at least to keep people's um, attentions up. The WIA did have quite a big surplus this year. There were no or much fewer travel expenses because of COVID and also the um, uh, job allowance that employers got because of COVID, that also helped. So um, it was quite a substantial surplus they had, unlike last year where there was a significant deficit. Um, so financially, the WIA had quite a good year. Big issue with them, as has been the case for years and years and years, is membership. The WIA keep losing members. Maybe the rate has slowed down a little bit, but it is not a sustainable pattern to be losing members year after year after year. Um, something this WI has got to sort out, otherwise they will die. WI has got to keep, be something that's attractive to members. Um, maybe there's some idea, will be some ideas coming in. Uh, some new people have been elected to the board. They don't officially take over until the board meeting after the AGM. So there wasn't a lot in the meeting that was positive that gave hope for people are hoping there's some improvements from the WIA. That's the middle of the meeting. 
maybe some of the people that spoke could have summarised things a bit shorter. It was a battle keeping attention. It got a bit better with the Merit Awards. People have, have um, done good for the WIA, so they've been awarded. Um, so that, that's probably the highlight of the meeting, volunteers for their hard work, getting recognition. And that's really important thing, volunteer recognition for an organisation that you know, most of the work done is on volunteers. So good that the volunteers were getting awarded. There was mention in the report from the president saying it was a quiet year for a representation, that sort of stuff. Um, I actually disagree with that. And it was good that Dale Hughes, VK1DSH, who's very heavily involved in that, did mention that there was actually a lot of activity. Even though there wasn't necessarily the all the travel that you had in previous years, you still had a lot of work going behind the scenes and a lot of meetings were done online. In fact, possibly more meetings online than before. President, current president, Greg Kelly, he won't be seeking to be nominated as president uh, for the next year. He's been president two years, so he thinks that's long enough. And yep, certainly with all the work that he was doing with this meeting in particular, uh, it seemed that things had to be done very much last minute, like that motion that failed. Annual reports from the various subcommittees uh, later on in the open forum. There are questions about the relationship between the subcommittees that do a lot of the grunt work and the board and president. So yeah, definitely scope for some improvements there. A lot of the reports were just not in by the time that was needed for the AGM and for members to uh, read them over. Anyway, what else? Open forum. John Mosels, he spoke about uh, Technorama, basically, uh, and, and community radio. There's a lot of similarities in, you know, amateur radio and community radio, both very heavily um, uh, voluntary based, both have issues with volunteers and retaining volunteers. Anyway, the uh, uh, um, talk from John, very optimistic, talking about the benefits to amateurs of becoming involved in community radio and the benefits for community radio. A lot of community radio stations may be largely program makers, may not have much of a, a technical expertise that's needed. Uh, amateurs might be able to help there. So look up Techno Technorama on the web. I'll have a link um, below and uh, Yep, you might be able to get some interesting things done with community radio if you volunteer in, in that. And there's certainly scope for cross-pollination there. So that's been a, a quick look at the WIA AGM. Hope you enjoyed it. Back to getting some contacts for the VHF Field Day. It's a bit slow going on the field day, so I'll try some whisper with the newfound high power of 25 watts. Despite the extra power I've got, there's very few other portable stations on the air and not much activity. So I don't think I can consider this one of my most successful field days.